lower foremost how will you plan how will you approach the patient say patient is coming imagine upper arch is beautiful correct you are not going to touch upper arch anything you are going to uh, do only the lower foremost maybe a full teeth situation or it may be a partial teeth situation or it may be a fully edentulous situation three kind of situation you can face this situation is partially some teeth are present some teeth are absent some situations totally already extracted some teeth all teeth are present all teeth has to go for extraction so first what will you decide already we have discussed about this what is the first thing to decide exposure alveolar plastic alveolar plasty is it necessary or not if necessary where to do alveolar plasty how much to do alveolar plasty so these are the three questions is it necessary to alveolar plasty severe result case or severely prodontitis till the root apex there is severe bone loss everywhere already alveolar plasty has been done by the natural prodontitis some most commonly the lower anterior will supraerect mm. when there is no molars right? or even the molars will supraerect so you have to decide this okay one way of determining is to see the panoramic view or to see the 3d reformatted view 3d reformatted view is a very good in this area the molar is still here but here it in this premolar or canine region it is still the root apex okay but here if you see here in the left premolar the bone is high in the first molar area the bone was very low again in the seven it is okay so we may have to do alveolar plasty here okay and here lower anterior also we may have to do alveolar plasty because the ridge is looking thin okay and just behind this canine or premolar the bone is little high right can you see here you can remove one or two mm here and after extraction the thin bone no you can remove anteriorly thin ridge mm. in the left premolar uh, still bone loss is not occurred so you have to do alveolar plasty here that's it okay mm. so it gives a fair idea about how much alveolar plasty we need to the problem comes when it is a totally uh, edentulous patient mm. okay totally edentulous patient what you have to do is you have to make the patient in the centric relation rest position then avert the lips and analyze the prosthetic space in the midline in the left right left because edentulous total edentulous space to do alveolar plasty and straight away mm -hmm. implants don't plan for alveolar plasty if we don't do proper alveolar plasty the lower abutment may hit the upper abutment the abutment we have to reduce more to give a process there will be less prosthetic space available aesthetically it is difficult to give so lot of challenges will come lower anterior if proper alveolar plasty is not done the lower incisor visibility will be more right and you cannot redo it you have to know again you want to see show on the flap remove the implants do alveolar plasty so alveolar plasty is a more important step so the idea of doing alveolar plasty is to create a prosthetic space not only a prosthetic space a uniform prosthetic space so that the bridge is looking uniform not uneven no otherwise the bridge will go wavy and not only that we are removing the poor quality thin alveolar bone so that future resorption and gap formation is minimized another advantage is when we are removing the uh, poor quality thin alveolar bone 
we can able to place our implant in a good quality bone okay so these are the reasons for doing advantages of doing alveoloplasty okay so only after planning to do only after you decide about the alveoloplasty you decide about the implant planning okay because after alveoloplasty there will be some amount of bone we have removed so what is the remaining bone so you have to plan according to that remaining bone okay so basically two kind of uh, three kind of situations you can face now the alveoloplasty plan is okay now the implant plan so the lower anterior full mouth planning first plan is alveoloplasty plan second is implant planning in the implant planning there are three kind of situation you can you can uh, face one is the straightforward situation simple simple such a simple case simple case means both the quality and the quantity is good both in anterior and posterior mandible anterior mandible is from premium to premium interferon interferon no? between foramen to foramen distal mandible is distal to interferon <laughs> distal to mental foramen sorry okay so straight forward situation good height is there good width is there bone quality is also good not very much cancerous this is simple cases next medium difficulty okay the bone quality is not very good quantity the posterior distal mandible mandible might be resolved anterior mandible there will be severe bone loss because of peroneitis this is medium category severe atrophic cases the third one severe atrophic cases severe means so severe the mental foramen will be on the top of the ridge anteriorly only 9 mm 10 mm bone distal mandible canal on the top of the ridge these are the severe atrophic cases and the mandible thickness is also very less buccolingual thickness only 4 mm 5 mm buccolingual thickness situations long term denture wearers mm -hmm. ectodermal dysplasia patients patients with very small face like mm -hmm. the bld c patient no shamani shamani you give it no who give it Um, yeah, you only gave. You only told the mandible looks very fragile. It was okay. So that kind of severe atrophic situations. So atrophic cases keep it separate. First, we'll discuss the simple and medium difficulty cases. Simple cases when all the both anterior mandible, posterior mandible, quality wise, quantity wise, good. Six implant is enough. Molar one implant, first premolar one implant, lateral incisor one implant. Axially you can place, or you can place the first premolar implant tilted. Starting from second premolar, you can place the implant in a tilted way. Follow from me, da. Last time I have mentioned this already. Simple cases, six implants. Mm. Six implants. How can you place? Four implants. Mm. Distinct. Mm. Mm. And the point is that we have to write it. That's why I am getting it. I will repeat. Okay. Six implants. How to plant? Molar, molar, one implant. First premolar, first premolar, one implant. Why we are choosing first premolar? Interim plant is. Why we are choosing first premolar? Canal color. Mental foramen to avoid mental foramen. In the second premolar, you have mm -hmm. mental foramen. So you are placing implant in the first premolar. Another implant in the 
lateral incisor lateral incisor lateral incisor all straight you can place or what is the other style hmm. tilted tilted in the the first premolar implant you can tilt slightly mesially starting from second premolar okay for better force distribution and to avoid mental form placing straight is quite easy nothing to think nothing to plan but if you plan to tilt then you should tilt how much degree or to tilt you should not prefer it lingually or buccally you should avoid mental foramen you should not tilt more if you tilt less you may injure the mental foramen so you, tilting if you are planning you have to tilt from the second premolar from the second premolar if you place straight what will happen mental foramen will get damaged that is why you are tilting from the first premolar if you tilt more you will hit the adjacent implant mm. which implant mm. lateral incisor mm. implant molar implant means slightly challenging uh, medium difficulty cases the distal mandible is not very good or the anterior mandible is not good. but it is not a very atrophic case so these kind of cases may come in those kind of cut if you see six uh, there is severe bone loss right but right side is looks okay the anterior also even if you do alveolar prostatal here you got good length of bone so when you see this length of bone don't think you can place this length of implant it may not be possible always why if you see no this is the panoramic view this is the anterior mandible this is the length 16 mm don't think you can place 16 mm because the mandible may be like this mm. if you drill here and try to place 16 mm implant you will perforate the mm. valley the mandible may be curved like this curved like this okay why i'm telling this this mandible is curved like this mm. okay so whatever the height you are seeing in the panoramic view you cannot uh, place if the mandible is straight no you can place 16 mm in the panoramic view 16 mm in place so medium this is a comes under the medium so medium cases better try not to place six implants place more number of implants seven or eight interframena it is four implants only mm. there is no change, change in that we are just placing two more two implants in the distal mandible mm. in the all on six plan we place only one implant in the molar area but here we are placing two implant in the molar area first molar first molar or second molar whatever is okay distal mandible that's it we are placing a good four implants in the interframena the interferon implants are the very important part they are the very essential implants okay because all on four works by the implants only in the interferon area in all on four doesn't place any implant in the molar area okay so now see the panoramic view with the panoramic view just uh, plan mentally this is the mental foramen this is the inferior alveolar canal okay this looks like a canine right long root this mm -hmm. is the mental foramen that means second premolar will come here sorry first, first premolar, premolar second premolar mental foramen here this is canine right yes. this may be first premolar second premolar the mental foramen is just below the mental Mm. Mm. it's below the second premolar and bone loss from the apex level in the molar area okay and if you see the soft tissue is very thick mm. okay so clinically if you see you you won't see you know a resorbed ridge and all 
the soft tissue itself is about 8 mm 9 mm thick okay so whenever the soft tissue is this much thick it presents uh, difficulties mm. because once the drill goes into the soft tissues it is difficult your tactile sense is no becoming reduced okay if you give block for a you no know, very thick cheek patient it is difficult no the needle is you don't know where is the lung in the same way since the tissue is very thick it's very tough to feel the tactile sense okay but here there is good amount of bone uh, there the seven area mm -hmm. okay here the six seven area is excellent good mm -hmm. there is no not much resorption and if you see there is a bridge here so whenever there is a bridge a poor bridge mobile bridge then expect bleeding because food impaction periodontitis, periodontitis chronic inflammation because of uh, food impaction plaque accumulation which patient cannot clean below the bridge so there will be a 24 hour plaque and food below the bridge so expect bleeding be prepared to handle that okay so first premolar we can place the implant right avoiding the metal foramen this is the canine just behind the canine you can place one implant first premolar and this may be the lateral and this four implants mm -hmm. whenever you are placing implant in the first premolar you have to be very careful okay axially why we are avoiding second premolar mental, mental foramen so first premolar is safe no we think first premolar is safe and we proceed but the problem is the drilling angulation if it is tilted distally mm -hmm. instead of drilling like this if you drill dis distally mm -hmm. we may go near the mental mm -hmm. how can it happen distally because we we may lose orientation when the, we remove all the teeth mm -hmm. when the patient is opened the mouth we don't know whether which whether it is parallel to the floor or not we lost the complete orientation and we may drill no mm. that is why uh, i try to select a, a shorter length of implant 13 mm if i select a 13 i will select a wider diameter if i select a longer implant no i will select a thinner diameter 3.15 18 or 4.2 into 13 or something 13 because if you are selecting thicker diameter you will get good stability so you don't need much length if you are selecting longer diameter sorry shorter diameter the tip will be thin the risk of injuring and nerve mental foramen is less okay if some amount of good socket is there the first premolar you can use the socket as the angulation but once we do alveolar plasty entire socket if goes it becomes a healed site then we may lose orientation that is why it is better to open the flap and see the mental foramen and do the drilling mm -hmm. well, that is the best safer because anyway you are going to do alveolar plasty to remove this chunk of bone so you are going to open the flap why not open till the mental foramen and see the mental foramen, mental nerve so many people they think no even course doctors they think when we try to show the mental foramen they want to see some cord running some no thread you cannot see like this something like this okay so i will show some wire like this that mental no connection no you cannot see this top of the top of the mental foramen and top of the mental now entering that no that white shiny part only you can see that is it. so when we are using elevator sharp elevator to elevate the periosteum will elevate beautifully but at one point of time it won't elevate it will stuck that is a matter like a bulge you have to be very careful in that otherwise you may tear the tear the mental no now okay once i was assisting one surgeon 
he was elevating the flap some surgery some trauma cystic case elevating the flap he thought it was of sebus uh, relieving the mental now actually you can see the mental now like this also but you have to do some dissection for uh, chin surgeries for orthodontic surgeries you have to dissect the now you can see at the time but now it is not it now our aim is to locate the mental foramen and avoid that area that's it to get a orientation he was pulling that and was saying what is this what some some no some some uh, some some thread is coming here he pulled it and the mental now got tired okay then only he realized oh his mental now so don't um, try to go beyond the top of the mental foramen okay so it is a straight forward situation distal mandible right side here also it looks straight forward not much problem but the problem comes in the problem comes in the left side distal mandible left side molar area okay because of severe bone loss what could be the reason maybe a mobile tooth was present long time mm. right mm. extracting at the proper time is better than leaving leaving or leaving with the mobile tooth mm. so because of the mobility till the root apex the molar has lost bone luckily seven has survived so the challenge will be here first we will plan the right side molar okay i'm just going to the mental foramen area always first to see the mental foramen okay how it comes up right it doesn't come like this it comes up and what is the distance between this and the crest okay and what is the distance between this and the lingual border these are the two things you have to notice what are the two things ma Between the crest and the mental foramen area. Interdistance between the lingual cortical mm. plate and the mental. Between the lingual cortical plate and the. And. Mm. And the third point also you have to observe. What is the angulation of this exit? Mm. It is more like a horizontal. Sometimes it. Goes no vertically. During course many cases, the exit. and what is the size of the mental frame okay it is quite big here but sometimes one case there was absent mental frame and we observed during the course no mental frame okay one case the mental frame was very very no 1 mm, mm diameter so this kind of variations you can see only after reflecting the flap i uh, realized uh, i was searching for mental foramen but there was no mental foramen i thought he might have severed it but when i checked the cbc city there is no mental it is very rare to find such cases you can see the literature why we are seeing the mental foramen is to analyze these things to look for the possibility of why we are seeing the mental foramen area to add injury to the bone and not only that to analyze the possibility of whether we can place implant over the mental foramen mm -hmm. area itself okay usually we think that it is the high risk zone the mental foramen or the second premolar area but if you have cbct and if you spend some time with the cbct you can place the implant straight mm. over the mental foramen a short implant mm. 
definitely here if you do alveoplasty even till here <coughs> definitely you can place a then eight mm implant most commonly we can place a eight mm implant in the ventral foramen area if there is severe bone loss still here no then you cannot place okay and then it is i will wonder ओके नाउ जस्ट बिहेड द मेंटल फॉर्म वी आर गोइंग ओके सो दिस इज द एरिया जस्ट बिहेड द मेंटल फॉर्म फर्स्ट अब्जर्व द शेप So this is the lingual border, myeloid ridge. This is the myeloid huh? depression. Okay. This is the myeloid ridge. Usually, the myeloid ridge will start appearing from the um, second molar, second, or from the distal root of first molar. Very rarely the myeloid ridge starts from the starts from the first molar. Huh? Second first molar. First mesial root of first molar. Usually it starts from the second molar. Sometimes it starts from the distal root. Distal root. Very rarely mesial root. mesial root. Very very rarely from the second premolar itself. Okay. So six implant you can plan in good quality and quantity bone first case. Ah, uh, cases in two different types, axial or tilted. Slightly challenging, uh, medium difficulty cases. The distal mandible is not very good, or the anterior mandible is not, good, but it is not a, a very atrophic case. So these kind of cases may come in those kind of category. If you see six. Uh, there is severe bone loss right but right side is looks okay the anterior also even if you do alveolar plasty till here you got good length of bone so when you see this length of bone don't think you can place this length of implant it may not be possible always why If you see, no, this is the panoramic view. This is the anterior mandible. This is the length, 16 mm. Don't think you can play 16 mm because the mandible may be like this. Mm. If you drill here and try to play 16 mm implant, you will perforate mm. the invalid. The mandible may be curved like this, curved like this. Okay. Why I'm telling this? This mandible is curved like this. Mm. Okay. so whatever the height you are seeing in the panoramic view you cannot uh, place if the mandible is straight no you can place 16 mm in the panoramic view 16 mm so medium this is a comes under the medium so medium cases better try not to place six implants place more number of implants seven or eight interframna it is four implants only mm -hmm. there is no change, change in that we are just placing two more two implants in the distal mandible mm -hmm. in the all on six plan we place only one implant in the molar area but here we are placing two implant in the molar area first molar first molar or second molar whatever is okay distal mandible that's it we are placing a good four implants in the interframna the interframna implants are the very important part they are the very essential implants okay because all on four works by the implants only in the interframna area in all on four doesn't place any implant in the molar area okay
So now, see the panoramic view. With the panoramic view, just plan mentally. This is the mental foramen, this is the inferior alveolar canal. Okay. This looks like a canine, right? Long root, this mm -hmm. is the mental foramen. That means second premolar will come here. Sorry, first, first premolar, premolar, second premolar, mental foramen. Here, this is canine, right? Yes. This may be first premolar, second premolar, the mental foramen is just below the mental. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's below the second premolar. And bone loss from the apex level in the molar area. Okay. And if you see the soft tissue is very thick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so clinically if you see you you won't see you know a resorbed ridge and all. The soft tissue itself is about eight mm, nine mm thick. Okay. So whenever the soft tissue is this much thick, it presents uh, difficulties. Because once the drill goes into the soft tissues, it is difficult, your tactile sense is now becoming reduced. Okay. If you give block for a you know, very thick cheek patient, it is difficult, no? The needle is, you don't know where is the lung. In the same way, since the tissue is very thick, it is very tough to feel the tactile sense. But here there is good amount of bone uh, is there, the seven area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here the six seven area is excellent, good. Mm -hmm. There is no not much resorption. And if you see there is a bridge here. So whenever there is a bridge, a poor bridge, mobile bridge, then expect bleeding. Because food impaction, periodontitis, chronic inflammation because of uh, food impaction, plaque accumulation, which patient cannot clean below the bridge. So there will be a 24 hour plaque and food below the bridge. So expect bleeding, be prepared to handle that. Okay. So first premolar we can place the implant, right, avoiding the metal foramen. This is the canine, just behind the canine you can place one implant, first premolar. And this may be the lateral and this four implants. Whenever you are placing implant in the first premolar, you have to be very careful. Okay, axially. Why we are avoiding second premolar mental, mental foramen? So first premolar is safe, no? We think first premolar is safe and we proceed. But the problem is the drilling angulation, if it is tilted distally, mm -hmm. instead of drilling like this, if you drill dis distally, we may go near the mental frame. Mm. How can it happen distally? Because we, we may lose orientation when the, we remove all the teeth, mm. when the patient is opened the mouth, we don't know whether which whether it is parallel to the floor or not. We lost the complete orientation and we may drill now. Mm. That is why uh, I try to select a, a shorter length of implant, 13 mm. If I select a 13, I will select a wider diameter. If I select a longer implant, no, I will select a thinner diameter. 3.75 18 or 4.2 into 13 or something. 13 or 16. Because if you are selecting thicker diameter, you will get good stability. So you don't need much length. If you are selecting longer diameter, sorry, shorter diameter, the tip will be thin. The risk of injuring and in nerve mental foramen is less. Okay. If some amount of good socket is there, the first premolar, you can use the socket as the angulation. But once we do alveolar plasty, entire socket if goes, it becomes a healed site, then we may lose orientation. That is why it is better to open the flap and see the mental foramen and do the drilling. Mm -hmm. well, that is the best safer because anyway you are going to do alveolar plasty to remove this chunk of bone. So you are going to open the flap. Why not open till the mental foramen and see the mental foramen, mental node? So many people they think no, even course doctors they think when we try to show the mental foramen, they want to see some cord running, some no thread. You cannot see like this. Something like this. Okay, sir will show some wire like this, that mental node connection. 
no, you cannot see this. Top of the top of the mental foramen and top of the mental now entering that you know that white shiny part only you can see that is it. So when we are using elevator, sharp elevator to elevate, the periosteum will elevate beautifully, but at one point of time it won't elevate, it will struck. That is the mental like a bulge. You have to be very careful in that. Otherwise we, you may tear the tear the mental no. nerve. Okay. Once I was assisting one surgeon, he was elevating the flap, some surgery, some trauma or cystic case, elevating the flap. With 30 forceps, he was um, relieving the mental nerve. Actually, you can see the mental nerve like this also, but you have to do some dissection for uh, chin surgeries, for orthodontic surgeries, you have to dissect the nerve. You can see at the time, but now it is not it. Now our aim is to locate the mental foramen and avoid that area. That's it. To get your orientation. He was pulling that and he was saying, "What is this? What some some no, some some uh, some some thread is coming here." He pulled it and the mental now got tired. Okay. Then only he realized, "Oh, it's mental now." So don't uh, try to go beyond the top of the mental foramen. Okay. So it is a straightforward situation, distal mandible, right side. Here also it looks straightforward, not much problem. But the problem comes in the problem comes in the left side distal mandible, left side molar area. Okay because of severe bone loss. What could be the reason? Maybe a mobile tooth was present long time. Mm. Right? Mm. Extracting at the proper time is better than leaving, leaving or leaving with a mobile tooth. Mm. So because of the mobility till the root apex, the molar has lost bone. Luckily, seven has survived. So the challenge will be here. First we will plan the right side molar. Okay. I'm just going through the mental foramen area. Always first to see the mental foramen. Okay, how it comes up, right? It doesn't come like this it comes up and what is the distance between this and the crest okay and what is the distance between this and the lingual border these are the two things you have to notice what are the two things ma? Between the crest and the mental foramen area. Interdistance between the lingual cortical mm. plate and mental plate. Between the lingual cortical plate and the, mm. and the third point also you have to observe. What is the angulation of this exit? Mm. It is more like horizontal. Sometimes it goes you know, vertically. During course many cases the exit and what is the size of the mental foramen? Okay, it is quite big here, but sometimes one case there was absent mental foramen we observed during the course. No mental foramen. Okay, one case the mental foramen is very very you no know, one mm diameter. So this kind of variations you can see. Only after reflecting the flap, I uh, realized uh, I was searching for mental foramen, but there was no mental foramen. I thought we might have severed it, but when I checked the CBCT, there is no mental. It is very rare to find such cases. You can see the literature. Why we are seeing the mental foramen is to analyze these things.
to look for the possibility of why we are seeing the mental from an area. To add injury to the bone. And not only that, to analyze the possibility of whether we can place implant over the mental from an mm. area itself. Okay. Usually we think that it is the high risk zone, the mental from or the second primal area. But if you have CBCT and if you spend some time with the CBCT, you can place the implant straight mm. over the mental foramen, a short implant. Mm. Definitely here if you do alveoloplasty even till here, <coughs> definitely you can place a 10 mm. 8 mm implant. Mm. Most commonly we can place a 8 mm implant in the mental foramen area. If there is severe bone loss still here, no, then you cannot place. Okay, now just behind the mental foramen we are going. Okay, so this is the area just behind the mental foramen. First observe the shape. Okay. So this is the lingual border, myeloid rich. This is the myeloid huh? depression. Okay. This is the myeloid rich. Usually the myeloid rich will start appearing from the um, second molar second or from the distal root of first molar very rarely the myeloid ridge starts from the starts from the first molar huh? second first molar first mesial root of first molar usually it starts from the second molar sometimes it starts from the distal root very rarely mesial root, mesial root. Very, very rarely from the second premolar itself. So, you have to find out from where the myeloid ridge is starting. What do you know? Take it. It's okay. Charlokana at the Fortunately for this patient, from the mesial root of first molar itself, mm. the myeloid ridge is starting. So myeloid ridge, why we have to see is, below the myeloid ridge there is a okay. lingual shelf here. Mm. You can do lingual cortical Engage. engagement. But is there a need? Is there a need? No? There is no need. Actually there is a good amount mm. of bone. Uh, Vertically. Uh, vertically in the intramedial rates. So there is no need to do lingual cutting. So this is the mesial root. Now I am going to the slightly distal area. Maybe the 6 or 7 area. Okay. If you see the myeloid ridge is more prominent, the lingual shelf, lingual fossa is more prominent. Okay. The canal is here only. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can go till here, around 12 mm. Or if you submerge the implant, no, 1.5 mm. So 4.2 into 10 we can place. If you hover the arrow here, you can see it is 1200. 1400. It is a good bone. But till off way, it is not good. Right? Here it is cancellous. Here it is. So when you drill, it will be soft till the 50%. Then mm -hmm. you will feel the hardness. Then for next 4 to 5 mm, it will be hard only. Okay. 
So you can place a 4.2 into 10 implant. The only thing is you have to drill properly here. Otherwise it may not insert fully. Okay. It is very easy in to insert till here because mm -hmm. it is loose bone. But after that you will get stability. So we will place one of that. 4.2 Or you can go to properties and increase the light. Okay. Or what we can do is we can select a 3.75 smaller diameter and increase the length. Mm. 11.5 mm. diameter you can so that is also so while drilling. A slight distal tilt is better, like this. Can you see, the implant was slightly distally tilted. If you tilt slightly distally, it is good. Actually, it is difficult to drill straight because of mouth opening difficulties. Mm -hmm. Naturally itself, uh, the drilling will be angulate. Okay. Then you can slightly bend. So this implant we have finalized. The length will be 10 or 11.5. The diameter will be 4.2 or 3.5. So during drilling you can uh, choose any of this. So mm. four possibilities are there. Mm. Now we will move to the left molar. Before that we will see the antiform. Okay. See, it is almost uh, not in the mental form and exit is not in the second premolar. Mm. Right? It is in the first molar, mesial root. Mm. Mental foramen, sorry, mental foramen usually exits in which tooth? Second. Second. Ah, okay. Rarely it is first premolar. First molar. And first premolar also. Very rarely first premolar. But Commonly, it exits in the second mesial root of first, first molar. molar. Second premolar is the common location. Mm. First molar and the mesial root of first molar are the rare locations. Okay, but you can see very commonly it exits in the mesial root of first. That means it is good for us. Mm -hmm. You can place the implant even in the second premolar area. Okay, the distance between mental from and the lingual plate is less this distance is somewhat okay but there is severe bone loss you can see no why well, there is a u-shaped bone loss like a like a concave cup shape hmm? no it is because the lingual plate is resistant to resorption the buccal cortical plate is resistant to resorption this bone is mm. poor quality so first this bone will resolve, then slowly this bone will resolve. Okay. Now we move on to the distal. Distal root of 6 maybe. See the myeloid ridge. This lingual shelf is very long, it is good. Mm. This is a lingual border. See the bone loss here. See there is good bone here, but there is bone loss here. Why? Lingual. Because the tooth itself is buckle. Mm. It okay. The molar tooth itself might be buckle. So there is bone loss still here. If you open the flap, you can place a good implant here. Okay, this will but it is difficult to place a compressive, no? 
you may place a 3 point something if you put 4.2 uh, the threads will be exposed mm -hmm. you can place a 3 point something into shows 13 or you can place a bezel also you can see the lingual cortical plate is 1500 mm -hmm. so you can place a bcs bezel is ideal because there is Resorption. bone defect here bone resorption here. see this is measly tilted this okay this is not correct now it is still mm. so after opening the flap we can determine whether to place basal or conventional okay. so whenever you are placing um, basal here in the molar area better to place one more implant here we placed one compressive right side so that one that one is enough mm. there is no need to place one more but here if you are placing uh, basal design then better to place one more in the mandible area ma distal mandible even if you are placing a compressive implant here better to place one more because this may not be a good no buckley there will be a lack of bone coverage so we will try the second molar area ok this is second molar so here the nerve is little closer you have to be very careful 4.2 into long point five in place. Okay. It looks the bone is like this, but clinically actually if you see here see no? clinically it looks normal. Mm. But if you cut the tissue, you will be 5 to 6 mm thickness without any. If I, if I want to avoid placing any incision and all, but anyway, we have to put incision, no? we have to do alveoloplasty mm. in the premolar area, right? Mm. One more technique is we can avoid placing any implant in this area, just place one implant in the molar. Uh, second, second premolar because it's a good quality bone. Or place one implant in the second molar, one implant in the, one implant in the first molar. Mm. Okay, so that is a, that will be a better plan. So we will place one implant in the second molar. Mm. Second molar, mild crystal alveoloplasty we may have to do, mm. and one more implant in the. Okay, here yeah, the bone looks. This may be BCS, basal or compressive, whatever it is. But this you can place a compressive. Okay. So here you may expect some bleeding. Right? Bone wax should be ready. So whenever there is a chronic mobile tooth, you know, periodontic tooth, there will be feeder vessels supplying. You can see now, this may be the feeder vessel mm -hmm. and Newton canal. So, from that, bleeding will come. So, immediately you should keep the bone wax there. So, we finished planning the distal mandible. Right side one implant, left side. Mm -hmm. Now, we are planning the interferon. This is first premolar, sorry, second premolar. If you don't want to complicate the things, you can just place a straight implant. Or if you want to do tilted, then some brain is needed, some planning is needed. Otherwise, we may end up in problems. Otherwise, straightforward put 
one implant in the first premolar area, one implant in the lateral, uh, lateral incisor area, and leave it. Okay, nothing wrong in it. Now we are going to do that only. The second premolar area, sorry, first premolar area. Anyhow, we are going to do alveoloplasty act, right? Mm. Till the root apex, we may do. So, don't do this mistake, don't plan from here. Because we are going to do. Mm. We are going to do. Alveoloplasty. Okay? So, plan from here. Fourteen hour or thirteen hour is good. So don't drill through the apex. Mm. From the socket apex to the lingual border, center point you can choose and place. Any diameter is okay. Three point one five or four point one. The entire bone quality is good. So if you are selecting four point two, you have to. The drill should be wider enough. Mm -hmm. So that it won't get struck during insertion. Mm. So during insertion, you have to do it slowly. Okay. If it is getting tightened, no. It prematurely, to. then you have to remove it and use a wider drill and do it. So to avoid that problem only, we will be selecting better to select a shorter drill implant. Anyway, we will get good stability because the bone quality is good. Okay, so see you now if you tilt it distally, unknowingly, you may Injured. go and touch this mental. Can you see? So th this mistake we should not do. So keep it straight. So we'll place one implant in the lateral. Usually, lateral area it will be like this. Crystal, it is thin. Anyhow, we will do mild alveoloplasty, right here. Even then, the ridge is thin. So, select a yes, lesser diameter. 3.75 is enough. And if you see, lingually the plate is thick. Mm -hmm. Buckly the plate is thin. So, if you do only the pilot drilling and place implant, this lingual plate will Hit. push our implant labially. And what will happen? Implant will expose. The threads will be exposed mm -hmm. in the crystal yes, mm -hmm. So what will I do is I will use a pilot drill, parallel drill, and then we have to use a wider drill to remove this lingual bone, mm -hmm. this little crystal one. So now the implant comes to mm -hmm. the center, not buckle. buckle. Yes. And one more thing, if you drill, see this total length may be mm. around 20 mm but can you place 20 mm implant mm. if you drill from here to here you will perforate it mm. so after alveoloplasty you can place you can drill like this you can 